For a van, this thing really moves. Let's see here, I gotta merge. Give us some gas. Ooh, it sounds so good. How can a van sound that good? That, that's crazy. This van is really tall and huge. I don't think I can even reach the ceiling. I can't, look at that. This thing is huge. I'm six feet tall. That means that's at least eight feet up there. It's a very, very big van. So I wasn't quite planning to do a vlog today, but I gotta say, I rented this Ford T350 full-size cargo van from Home Depot, and I'm loving it. It's the coolest like van truck I've ever driven. I've driven a lot of vans in my life. This one is so much fun to drive. It's a 2018. It looks brand new. It's only got 2,000 miles on it down there. It drives so well. I'm like shocked because I've driven a lot of old school vans. Uh, most of the vans I've driven from the 2000s are from the 90s. They drive like little trucks. This one is truck has a truck feel. But it's phenomenal. It is so amazing in this. Tr I've never driven a van like this. First of all, it's got manual shifting. I mean, manual shifting in a giant cargo van. It's super tall. I mean, the, the ceiling goes all the way up to there. I don't even know how high that is. It feels at least eight or nine feet up. Uh, maybe there's a clearance written somewhere up here. I don't know. I can't find it. And I'm trying to drive in vlogs enough uh, multitasking as it is. I absolutely love this thing. It is the coolest truck. It drives beautifully. It's got a reverse backup camera that shows up in the in the rear view mirror here when I put it into reverse, which obviously I can't do while I'm driving forward, uh, but I'll show that later. A few moments later. All right, so this thing has a rear view mirror, but there's no rear windows. Why? Check this out. You put it in reverse, and all of a sudden there's a little backup monitor sensor in there. That's where they get the screen. That's where they stick the screen. Since there's no screen anywhere on the dashboard, it's in the rear view mirror. Other than that, that rear view mirror is absolutely useless. There's nothing to see. There's a gate and no windows in the rear. But it is very clever design. And you cannot see that there's any monitor there at all when it's not, when it's not on. Pretty cool. It's got uh, heating that's really good. Most vans, the heating is horrible. I don't know if anyone else has experience with vans, but, the, but uh, ooh, look at that cabbie trying to cut me off all right well I got two and a half tons of uh, rented steel here um, maybe it's an aluminum body I have no idea this thing is off the hook it's got power windows power mirrors double giant towing size mirrors up there it's got pretty basic setup other than the fact that there's manual shifting which was a huge surprise radio and auxiliary only there's absolutely no other connections no cd no mp3 no bluetooth no nothing oh light screen and the thing is though your sitting position is super high you're just way 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 off the road i mean all vans have a high high position this is even higher i don't know how else to express it than that that way if you've driven regular vans you know that they are they're all up there but this one's way up there you're in the sky like look at that little minivan right there he's so low below me he's he's looking at me i don't know why maybe i cut him off i don't know not intentionally of course the windows are gigantic the armrests are the only thing i don't like they're not very ergonomic unless you're sitting still like right now it's fine but when you try to drive like that it's like a weird angle other than that it's amazing the sitting position could be better but that's not the fault of the van as much as it is that home depot installed these metal gates a little bit too close two more inches back and it would be more comfortable uh i, I really love this thing it is the coolest van and it's quick it is absolutely a fast vehicle uh, I don't know what kind of engine's in it. Maybe I'll pop the hood before returning it a little later on. Uh, but it really, really moves. Uh, so stick around and I'll uh, cover more of the vehicle once I'm driving in a little safer position. I gotta get on the highway right now. This van is so tall. It's more than eight feet tall. It's huge. It works really well. Big lights, huge lighting in the back. The doors open very easily and smoothly, perfectly. That's the one door, then the other handle is here. The inside of the cargo area is well lit with what looks like four individual LED lights plus one an LED strip. Very easy to see. The floor has got some rubber coating that works, that 
is not sticky, but just enough that holds everything in place without actually having to drag it out when you're trying to unload the cargo. With a uh, diamond plate on around the rims of each doorway, um, places to strap stuff to. The walls are not bare, there's insulation. Uh, for anyone who's ever been in a van that doesn't have that, you know how noisy it gets. Every pebble that hits the road, you hear it inside the cabin. This thing's really well made. I mean, it's the like most well-made van I've ever seen. Let's see how this closes. And there's even locks to hold the door in whatever position you leave it in. Extremely, extremely well made. Side door. It's not a power side door. That's the one thing it needs because it's heavy. But it works beautifully. It stays in place. And it's got these little rubber th bumpers here that double as handles when you go to pull the slide it shut if you're on the inside. But you see, it's a heavy door and it didn't close well. You do need to use force to get it in. Very happy with this van. One point of note is the way the windows work. Only this one opens. This one doesn't. So you don't get that much horizontal space. I'm being laughed at. <laughs> you don't get that much horizontal window, but the height of it is quite high and it does go all the way down to just the last centimeter. It stays up. So you get a lot of nice air in there. The door is not at all square, that cut out. You see what happens when you open it. Kind of an interesting shape. Power door locks operate all the locks, including in the rear. Power windows, power mirrors, automatic headlights, cruise control. It actually has everything of like a normal car. It's pretty slick. It's really clever design. Check this out. That's the fuel tank. That took me a few minutes to figure out. I needed help from the gas station guy. I couldn't find the hole. <laughs> that is so cool though. Clever. Curious what's in the engine. Let's see what we got here. That looks like a four cylinder. No, I see three spark plug heads. That's probably a six cylinder. Okay, let's see what else. Big breather hose. Really quite large reserve of liquid fluid reserve over there. Fuse box, batter, battery for jump start connector. Yeah. It's a van engine. Yeah, not so exciting. For a van, that is an incredibly quiet startup. That was manual. Oops. Pull it out of the loading dock. Don't hit either side. It's pretty narrow. Whoa, that's pretty close. Mm -hmm. I got to cut that in. Alright, there we go. And this is the Ford 350 van. I think it said T350. It's not written on it anywhere, so I actually don't know the exact model number. But I really like this thing. I mean, this is honestly the best van I've ever driven. I've driven probably about six or seven different kinds of vans in my life. For extended periods of time, some of them, like a few thousand miles. So, I got my experience, and I have to say this is hands down with no competition in any close sight, the best van I've ever driven, by far. It's just phenomenal. It drives like a car, it's super easy. Literally, if you could drive a car, or I would say if you could drive an SUV, not necessarily a car, but if you drive an SUV, you could drive this. It, it's great. So there's this little v button right next to the drive selector, TH. When you press that, it goes into tow haul mode. And when you do that, all the gearing gets really, really low. You can hear the vehicle. It's like super, super torquey, but not that fast. It like loses about half the sp its normal acceleration power, but it's super torquey. Like you're ready to pull, I don't know what, pull another house down, pull a house down. I don't know what, it feels stronger. It's just, maybe it's psychological, maybe it really does something, I don't know. But you definitely feel a difference in the throttle acceleration and you can hear the engine is, is really torquing down. One of the really nice things about driving this and pretty much any van is your command of the road seating position. You can see for miles, doesn't matter who's there, 
most of the vehicles on the road are way shorter than you and you can see when there's traffic pretty far in advance and it's really nice that way like here look at that look at that traffic I'm about to hit New York City traffic Ooh, that engine sounds good for a van that's great look how high you are though there's like a minivan in front of us and you could totally see the roof flying above that minivan and you could see for a pretty good distance in advance of that uh, just like all the cars where the traffic is which lanes are the best which are the worst pretty much all of them are the worst today unfortunately this is rush hour in new york city at the end of the day when everyone goes home this is normal here sadly but it is considered normal in this place uh, called New York City. This is what it's like when you're around five o'clock. It's actually exactly five o'clock right now. And wow, look at that. Whoa, that's quite good pickup for a van. Not gonna beat a car that's like a sports car, but for a van, this thing really moves. Let's see here, I gotta merge. Give us some gas. Ooh, it sounds so good. How can a van sound that good? That, that's crazy. Anyway, you can see over all the other cars. It's really pretty neat. Uh, I'm holding the camera roughly eye level right now, so this is about what I see. And except for that school bus up there, you're pretty much higher than everybody. I mean, everybody. Look at this Explorer next to us. It's like a midget car. Yeah, that's probably not politically correct. Sorry, I meant that like the circus cars, the way where they put like uh, like a hundred people in them. They're actually called the midget. That was made by MG. It's not meant as a derogatory term. <laughs> yeah, MG midget, whatever. Anyway, the world's become too PC. Sorry. So here I am driving this big van, enjoying it, loving the road open road I can see everything around me I'm higher than everybody else I can see all the traffic up there it's pretty neat I gotta say I like driving this thing it's higher than a regular van even that that's the nice thing about it Ooh, look at these drivers man my god people in New York drive crazy oh look at the school bus he's passing everybody <laughs> he's just going at it look at him He's speeding, by the way. There's no way that guy was doing the speed limit if he passed me. I'm, I'm going about three or four miles an hour under the speed limit. And if he could pass me that fast, that guy, that school bus is speeding. Check that out. Completely full tank. I've been driving this thing for about three hours now. And the needle is still over the F in full. It didn't even dip to the real F. It's literally like still more than full after three hours of driving mind you it's new york city traffic driving it's not a high mileage or anything like that i'm not on the highway for more than a minute or two until i hit bumper to bumper traffic again but still even even three hours of idling should bring it down more than that this is remarkably fuel efficient i mean it's it's amazing honestly i have to put gas in it's a rental vehicle if you don't put gas in they charge you but it's only going to take like two dollars or one gallon three dollars and something cents or something because if I put any more in, it's just gonna pour out. It's literally beyond the F. Car in a manual now, the car to van. And I gotta say, it is quite good. You will hear the engine. Right now I'm in sixth gear. And yes, it's a van with six gears, which is remarkable in itself. Most vans have four, are still four speeds, or at least the older ones. And I'm gonna downshift it now because it got traffic coming up and you'll hear the engine go off. Hear the engine breaking? upshift so I keep some speed and fourth is a little bit too low for this hill so it's downshifted to three upshift so it keeps rolling honestly the manual transmission on the manual shifting automatic transmission on this is quite good it, it, it's really really good it's not like a car it's definitely not like a car but it is it, and it's definitely not like that m4 right over there I'm sure it's not going to perform like that, but wait, I need some more power. Downshift to two. Upshift to three. And caught up to the car in front of me, so upshift one more to force. And now it's nice and smooth. I got to say, this thing works really well. I, I don't think I've ever driven a cargo van that had a manual shifter at all. 
and nonetheless one that works as well. It's really, really good. This is the most well-engineered cargo van I've ever driven. I'm, I'm loving it. One of the nice things about a cargo van is you're up high, and look at the view. That's New York City in the distance there, man. That's incredible. You can't see that when you're in a car because the barricade wall is so low. Oh my God, it's just beautiful up here. Uh, vans, man, they're fun. So I've been driving this van around now for several hours and there's a few things that I do notice that I didn't realize right away. The first thing is that the steering wheel, it's like a racing car steering wheel, never mind the big yellow ugly sticker. It has a grip that's like a racing steering wheel. If you look at the back, it's got like a recess right here for your fingers. I mean, it feels like you're driving a Ferrari, even though it's a giant cargo van. However, the downside is there's no buttons on the steering wheel. So you can't actually control your radio like almost every vehicle today. Although vans are it's pretty uh, rare to see that, but the radio is here and it's far. I'm six feet tall and if I'm sitting back in a seat like this, I can't reach it. I have to lean forward every time to touch the radio. Uh, is this, these are like, like uh, first world problems. It's not a big deal, but... They could have moved this to, I don't know where actually with this design, but closer. <laughs> it could have been, uh, come out, it could have come out of the dashboard a little more. It's pretty neat. You have like cup holder here, place the, I don't know if that's a handle or storage here, storage there. The best storage is up here across the whole top of the vehicle and it's big. It's huge amount of storage in this thing. And that's just in the driver's cabin, like it's a cargo van. It's really, really well made. More cup holders, small cargo space, glove compartment there. Big glove compartment. If you drop something in there, there's no way you're reaching that while you're driving. Some other small compartment there. There's a small compartment down here. I have been using that, unfortunately, as a footrest because it's not that much comfortable because the, the wheel well is actually right over there. It's not really that comfortable to put your foot on that. It's more comfortable to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's probably not the nicest thing to do to a rental car, but I'll clean it before I give it back. So that's uh, the interior. Oh, you got a small compartment here that holds my phone vertically perfectly. Uh, some big compartment here, which I don't know what I would put in that. Um, because it's like right in your line of sight when you drive. Oh, speaking of line of sight, look at the size of this windshield. It's huge. It is a huge windshield. This thing has the most incredible visibility for a van. Uh, if anyone's driven the old school vans, they also had good visibility, but nothing like this. This is, this is like how you'd probably experience being like in an 18 wheeler, except you'd be even higher up. Uh, looking at the sticker here, apparently it's eight foot three this van it's huge in terms of height uh don't go under any low bridges with this thing it's really really big uh, it's really great vehicle though i love it 212 volt outlets right here and here and pretty slick looking dashboard honestly if i told you that i was driving a mustang with that dashboard you'd probably go oh yeah it is a mustang except it's a cargo van i'm really fond of this vehicle it's, it's really quite good all right, it's getting a little bit too dark to keep filming inside this uh, cargo van, so I'm going to call that the end of the vlog, the end of this tar cargo van review. And uh, you got to push that subscribe and like button, please. That's how this channel and my videos will continue. You got to push that button, share it with your friends, tell them to push that button, the subscribe, the bell, the like, the, all the same stuff. You know what you got to do. Please do it, please. Please cheese, all right, because I need that cheese. <laughs> all right, stay, stay tuned, guys. See you in the next video. The doors work really great. I'm parked a little too close to the loading dock, to, and it's locked. Yo, 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 yo.